Hi, today I'm talking to Jason, and I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Jason. Um, I studied computer science at Simon Fraser University, where I graduated in 2018 from the SFU ZJU dual degree program. Uh, since then, I've been working as a software engineer at a few different companies, and I'm currently uh, a software engineer at Apple. Okay, really cool, really cool. So what are some types of projects then that you work on and your role in those projects? Sure. Um, so my first role out of school was at a company called Counterpath, where I worked as a software developer, just working on their uh, desktop communications tools, so like similar to like Skype. You know, there's calling, video conferencing, messaging, stuff like that. So I mainly worked on the desktop apps there. Um, my next role after that was at Electronic Arts, where I worked on mobile sports games. Um, I, I can't say too many details about the specifics, but I worked like on the client side. Um, you know, th there was a lot of UI, a lot of integrating with the server, a lot of um, gameplay, 3D stuff. So that was very interesting, and I learned a lot there. And currently, I'm working at Apple uh, on Xcode Cloud, which is their uh, CI CD platform that's integrated into Xcode. So I'm just working on the client side there. Okay. So then on those projects, then what does an average day look like for you? Are you spending it a lot of time sitting coding? Are you attending meetings? What is that like? I think it's a mix of both. So I, Ideally, I would like to spend, you know, my whole day coding, but obviously that's not always the case. You know, there's meetings sometimes with different stakeholders, like um, sometimes we'll meet with design to go over certain features or how those are look, looking like and just ask any questions or clarify ambiguities. Um, other meetings like team update meetings or with uh, like executives just like demoing certain features or just describing our progress for the current milestone. Uh, things like that. So on a given day, uh, maybe I'll say 80% of the time I can spend coding and the rest of the time in meetings or miscellaneous things. Okay. And then also from what I've kind of heard, it sounds like you've worked across a lot of different types of projects, different types of, I'm assuming types of code, I guess, types of coding, like working on UIs and now servers, I believe you mentioned. How do you learn as you're going, how to work on these different types of projects. I think it's really helpful when you have coworkers who are open to questions and willing to help. So I think you have to be unafraid to ask questions. Um, there's always a saying of there's no stupid questions. And I, I really do believe that. They're, the only way to learn new things is just by trying them. And a lot of the times you might run into roadblocks, especially if you're a newer engineer. And just having the resources there to support you and answer your questions is uh, really important. Um, it's it's impeding to your own progress if you try to do things yourself all the time and not ask questions. But it's it's a delicate balance of both, right? So you you want to structure your questions in a way that um, here's the the problem that I encountered and I tried X, Y, and Z. Um, what's the next step that I can take? And that gives uh, whoever's your mentor or your coworker like a really easy road to help you without necessarily giving you the answers, but like guiding you towards maybe you can look at this or maybe you can try this. And I think at least for me personally, I learn a lot from just doing things. So if I have uh, kind of a general area to look towards when I work on those things, I can learn just from experience and doing them. And it's a lot more constructive for me if I've already formulated the questions or the problems that I'm encountered versus uh, just blindly asking someone, hey, I'm stuck, what do I do? So I think it's really helpful to learn just from doing things, but like time box it. Don't spend too much time stuck on a thing. And once you reach that time box, like maybe let's say I'll spend a day looking at this. And if I can't figure it out, I'll go ask whoever's appropriate. Okay, yeah, that, that seems like a good way to do it. What would you say then is one of the best things about working as a software engineer? Uh, I think one of the things, I mean, as a software engineer versus other types of engineers is that uh, iteration is much quicker. 
So, you know, I'm not building a bridge. I don't need to plan for, you know, six months and get all the right materials. And if something's wrong, then the whole thing just collapses, right? If, you know, we can plan generally and start building a solution. And if we find out that there's any gaps in knowledge or things that we didn't consider at the time, we can on the fly try to address those concerns because software is much more malleable than something like a physical structure. So I really enjoy that iterative process of like trying to take a first pass at a problem. And if that doesn't solve everything, maybe we'll solve like 70%, then keep working on it and then solve the remaining 30%. Or, and then ne maybe next time we'll get to 90% and then just keep going from there. And there's always a way to improve, even if a piece of software you might think is perfect, there might still be things under the surface that are not obvious that you could that could be better. And there's always ways to improve and that process is really quick yeah that's something i've heard from other software engineers as well it's really cool how even some engineers spend their whole jobs creating systems like i believe maybe not cloud but backup servers and stuff like that to make sure that you can quickly change things in case something happens and mm -hmm. to overall make the process easier on the flip side of that coin, what would, you, what would you say is one of the more challenging things about software engineering? Hmm. I think probably because there's so many technologies that are coming out all the time, it's sometimes it gets difficult to decide what you want to kind of build your expertise in. So personally, I believe that if you're a good software engineer and you have good foundations, it doesn't matter that much what specific language or framework or technology uh, you use. If you have good fundamentals, you can pick up new technologies uh, fairly easily because there's a lot of transferable concepts and just uh, foundations. Um, but it, it definitely is hard, especially as you know, a newer software engineer or as a student to decide what am I gonna spend my time learning because that will most likely uh, shape where uh, your career goes in the early stages. So there, there's a lot of technologies out there and a lot of different domains in software engineering. Um, it's It gets hard to decide what to go into and what skills you need to be a good candidate for a lot of those jobs. Okay. What would you advise to students then who are considering software engineering, maybe if they're in high school or even first year undergraduate and they're kind of trying to figure out maybe what stream to go into, what's something you'd encourage them to do to make sure that this is the career for them and to prepare themselves? Yeah, I would definitely. Three. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I definitely recommend just trying it yourself because there's lots of resources online, like Free Code Camp, the Odin Project, things like that, where they give you very basic things and you can kind of learn what the process is like as a software engineer, like building, just writing some code and like building a website or something like that. Um, I find for me, that's what got me started is just, I I liked the basic things. And then uh, when I took my intro to programming class in university, I found out that uh, I really enjoyed that process of, you know, writing some code and figuring out what's wrong with it, going back and just changing it, making it better. So I think um, there's lots of resources online for students who are maybe not sure if that's the career path that they want to take to just try coding uh, on their own time. And if, if that's something they do enjoy, then they could decide whether they want to pursue that in university, or maybe they take some courses in university and they enjoy that as well, then they can pursue that further as a career. How about employability wise? Is there anything you'd recommend maybe since you work at Apple, a lot of people want to work there, any tips for kind of boosting up that resume and kind of how to approach that? Yeah, um, I would say definitely take advantage of the co-op programs at your universities. I think co-op experience is very valuable because it's a very controlled environment and they know that they're trying to nurture future talent. So they'll, at least the places that I've worked at, um, we really spend the energy and the resources to nurture our co-op students, to give them this, the resources that they need to build their skills, not only technical skills, but skills of working in a team, working with people who may, might be less technical, like designers or producers or um, project managers. I think 
having that real world experience uh, through a controlled environment like a co-op program is uh, very valuable. I think that adds a lot of uh, value to your resume too, because even though you're still a student, you're still in school, um, you've experienced what real world software engineering is like at different companies and different roles. So I think that's probably the number one thing I would say like to boost your resume. Another thing that I hear a lot of, and I don't know if you've seen the videos about this, but it's like, skip university, just learn coding by yourself online at home, get these certificates, make personal projects, and then that's enough to get you into industry. I've definitely seen people claiming that. What would you say, I mean, in your experience, is the difference between the job prospects even of doing something like learning how to code on your own time instead of committing to university and then community college coding then university code coding and kind of the differences between universities of different standings. Right. Um, I'm not sure I can comment on universities of different standings, but I think I have a general, at least my perspective of how I see those different paths. So um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of YouTubers, influencers who post videos about, oh, you can just take this online course or boot camp and be employable in 60 days or whatever. And I'm sure that's true for some people, and I'm not taking away from their their knowledge or anything like that. But I think it's definitely it definitely makes the road harder for them. Um, I think a lot of employers do look at a degree as kind of like a rite of passage, like you've put in the hours and you you prove that you can work in this structured environment for four years or however long your degree is. And I think for a lot of employers, that's like a basic requirement. And it's definitely less important nowadays because of the emergence of these boot camps and and even like diplomas, where you don't need to spend four plus years uh, in university learning all of these things to be employable. But I think university puts you through a lot of the fundamentals and theory of computer science that you wouldn't learn from uh, these boot camps or online courses. So these courses they would teach you like a very specific skill set. Like I want to learn how to build a website with this technology on the front end and then this technology on the back end. And you don't learn a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes and like the fundamentals of computer science. And some some places they don't uh, place as much importance on that as long as you know how to use the technologies that they use. So a lot of these boot camps, they'll teach you like popular technologies. So like this popular JavaScript framework. Uh, so they try and maximize your employability that way because they'll try and teach you tools that they think more employers are looking for. Whereas I think if you do a four year degree in university, you might learn a lot of different technologies and not be an expert in any particular one, but you have a lot of uh, foundational knowledge in computer science that allows you to learn new things quicker and understand why things might be done a certain way. So that I think gives you more uh, potential uh, in terms of what you can learn based on your existing knowledge. 